So it's uh, Tuesday, November 12th. It is about 7.08. Sorry for the late start. We were just printing some documents here. This is the Village Depot offices in North Bennington, and this is the Board of Trustees for the Village of North Bennington. Uh, the first order of business tonight is to review and approve the minutes from our last meeting on uh, October 8th, 2019. Um, have the trustees had an opportunity to review the minutes? Are there any questions or concerns about the minutes? May I make a motion to approve? Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, and any discussion? Any objection to that motion? Hearing none, that motion passes unanimously. Um, we are five trustees. Um, Mr. Patterson can't be with us tonight, so we'll, uh, we do have a quorum and um, can approve uh, motions tonight. So um, the second order of business is to review the monthly warrant and approve payment of the bills. So we have uh, a warrant, let's, um, Take a look at the warrant from uh, leftover October expenses first. So at our last meeting, we had gotten some bills in just before the meeting that were not able to be added to the warrant that we signed on October 8th. Um, so these are expenses for the month of October um, that we'll just approve today. And then we'll move on to our normal November expenses. Yeah, I would make a motion to approve the actual for six thousand seven hundred and thirty-four cents. And this would be an additional six thousand seven hundred dollars and thirty-four cents, correct? Yes. Mary? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Is there a second? Second. Okay. And any discussion on that? Okay, without objection, we'll approve that warrant also unanimously tonight. So, um, the warrant for tonight, November 12th. is uh, there were a lot of expenses in the month of November for us, so um, we might want to just go over some of the larger expenses um, so that the so people can be aware of what the expenses were this month. Well, your largest one is $140,000, and that is for all the paving projects. Um, that has been compared. The detailed invoice was compared to the bid. It lined up exactly to the bid per each street with the exception of one street for which there was less work done so that that invoice is actually less than the bid. Okay. Your second biggest invoice there is uh, just about $70,000. Is that what it is, Mark? No, 96. 96, thank you. Um, and that is for the new truck body. It now has the iron work being done to it, um, and you'll discuss that again in the other email that I sent you with regards to motions that are needed later on. Um, a third big invoice that you'll see on there is a progress billing for our audit. That is actually late. That should have been in last month, but because I uh, had to be on an out of town very unexpectedly, I did not get that to Lori and just slipped my mind when, uh, um, when um, she prepared that second um, round of checks. So that's a $7,400. 75, yep. Oh, 75, okay. And uh, that is, the funds for that um, have already been reserved. We have a very healthy audit reserve for that. Um, they were the three that stood out in my recollection, but. Uh, so just to review, so. Are there any other ones? We on? had major paving work done this year, this summer on uh, West Street and School Street and Royal and Aces Way and Susan Taylor. That was all done by Fuller and we had bid that and um, knew that it was going to be 140 and now it's just the payment of the bill essentially. Yes. And the truck again was a, a, an expense that was approved back in January. We ordered it way ahead of time to make sure that we'd have it for this season and 
we knew that that was going to be, I think, around 130. Um, it's actually going to be a little bit more than more than that because oh, the, no, the was, body was that, and right. then the iron is another close to 70. Um, but was, that um, that yeah, invoice, that delivery invoice, also matched exactly to the bid. Okay, great. That was verified. Great. Um, okay. So, any other? Just the HP Fairfield. For yeah. Four thousand five hundred seventy. Norm told me what that was today. Um, uh, four thousand five hundred. Four thousand five hundred seventy. It's yes. the sander. So, sand. That's right. So, this, so there, we have three <coughs> working trucks: the big truck, the silver truck, and the black truck. The black truck had not had a sander until mm -hmm. now. And so we purchase a new sander, so all three trucks have a sand salt mm -hmm. um, applicator, so um, we can run them all at the same time, which is good. And our new our new normal, which is that we get a lot of ice and rain as opposed to a ton of snow. And we also had our first salt delivery. Looks like four thousand. Oh yes. Yeah, I'm right there. So it's also a biggie. And where was the Bowdoin paving? That was Roy Royal? That was culvert work. Okay. That was up on near Ridge Heights. And yep. I can't. The street is there? Yeah, the street is on there, but I don't remember off the top of my head. It uh, goes across. Uh, How many paving side of Prospect Street? There's uh, a couple here from them. River Road. River. Like going to the Henry Bridge? Yep. Yeah. Those are the only questions I had. So I'll make a motion to approve the warrant for three hundred thousand one hundred eighty-five dollars and eighty-one cents. I second it. Um. Any discussion? We okay, so we got um, all those in favor of the warrant for three hundred thousand one hundred eighty-five dollars and eighty-one cents. Indicate by saying aye. 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 And there's none opposed. Motion passes. Um, so any the third order of business tonight is citizen comments. Uh, we have a payroll. Payroll. Okay. okay. Um, but before we get to that, we'll do <laughs> payroll quick. Any questions on payroll? Looks pretty straightforward. Yes, I'll continue the trend and make a motion mm -hmm. <laughs> to approve the payroll in the amount of $8,266.05. And I will second. Is there any opposed? Okay, motion carries unanimously. Now, are there any citizen comments? Is your turn. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> what can we do for you? <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Candy Cuthbert, and I am here on behalf of the Bennington County Coral Society. Um, our board has decided to go to, or has asked, that we go to each of the participating towns in the chorus, or who have members in the chorus, to ask for some funding. Um, we're struggling to hire orchestra and soloists and things for the concerts. We do two concerts a year. Um, we are at present, well, our numbers vary. Sometimes we're 40 people, sometimes we're 100 people. They're all over the place. So we need some help making ends meet. And we're just asking for $1,000 um, from each of the different towns that are willing to maybe support us. Okay. Um. I think that 
I'm, I'm, I, I can maybe we can ask our clerk or, or treasurer. So that would be typically. something that you would do to put um, make that request in our annual at our annual village meeting, and we would put that on the warrant on the warning. Um, shall the, the residents appropriate one thousand dollars to the Bennington County Coral Society, and they will make that decision. I don't and think we've had, we, we don't, I, I think that we're authorized to make expenditures for certain things, but if it's a request that's not one of the designated um, expenditures, then we can't just approve it as a board because we're not authorized by the voters to do that specific thing. So what, so what she's describing is the process by which you can request it, it's basically and I believe just, you just did that yeah. you did it but you could also it, it would be nice actually just to have a letter just okay. a, just a simple letter to the village that states the amount that you're requesting and who you are and have it signed by a, you know a member of the board or the or the chair of the board if, okay. if possible um, does the letter need to come from me or can it come from the board it doesn't need to be like a motion of the board or or, or something approved you it might need the board from the correct I, I would prefer it to be from the board of the okay. of the Coral Society, okay. um, just because that way we know that the whole organization is asking, as opposed to you know different you know who know if it's a hundred members you know maybe some are think they should do it, some they think they shouldn't, but if it's the board, then generally there's a consensus sure, that it is. And, the, and Candy, the fiscal year is. Um, uh, July 1st through June 30th, so the process that is being described would have funds available as of the 1st of July. Okay. And here's the address. So, unfortunately, it sounds like your concert may be coming up. I think our, our hands are kind of tied as to whether yeah, we, we can, can do well, it. Well, we have one coming up November 23rd. It's actually on book. Media at oh, Old Castle. Wonderful. Um, which should be really fun. Um, so, anybody that's watching, <laughs> <please stop. laughs> um, And then we will be doing a much larger concert there. We are combining with the King Corral and with <coughs> our University of Worcester, where our director is now a professor. Um, and we are doing Mahler. Mm -hmm. Two performances, one here and one in Massachusetts. Candy, um, is there a website or anything where people might make donations? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Bennington County Coral Society. Bennington County yes. Coral Society. We're on Facebook. Okay. Um, I don't remember the website's address, but we are definitely on Facebook and you can contact anybody, anybody on the board or. There's always something out there. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, certainly, I think I speak for the board that we, you know, are very supportive of the organization and would welcome that request for funding. Mm -hmm. um, but that, you know, we have to follow the process. So, as is uh, typically, yeah. Yeah. everyone in our community seems to really support the arts. So, I think you would probably have very little pushback right. on that. Right. Um, we tend to really support mm -hmm. most that come forward. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll make sure you get a letter. We actually have rehearsal tomorrow night. Perfect. Okay. Great. So, I will talk to the board members. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks thank for, you thank you very much for coming today. <laughs> Stay warm. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Um, all right. So we have uh, no further citizens for comment. So we're going to move to the treasurer's report. Oh, I have a bunch to say. So I'll start right in. So the first thing is today was the last day to pay taxes. Yay. Um, I am hoping just with what was in so far um, that we'll be in pretty good stead uh, once the rest of the mail comes in. Um, I'm also pleased to report that we have the property that we had for tax sale 
has redeemed. So we will have the back taxes paid on that probably next week. Um, there is one, one singular remaining delinquent property from all prior years. And the taxpayer is really uh, very open to getting that resolved uh, by the end of the year. So I think... So just say you have one outstanding? One. one. Ed. Wow. Can you get on that? That must be, oh, a, that must be a record of some yeah. sort. It is. That's so that's 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 amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's, we're working on, the, the, that's the uh, update on that one. Before I get to the big thing, just wanted to also comment that Norm and I discussed today the uh, Better Roads uh, grant program, that's an annual one that BCRC alerted us to and we'll get some help with that. Um, we're going to apply for two grants. One is a road um, inventory. We had actually been awarded this grant some years ago and then all of the PFOA kerfuffle came up and BCRC was swamped with taking care of all of that. So we actually couldn't get the work done, so we lost that funding. We are all but guaranteed to have it this time around, to be reawarded it this time around. The second um, one that we'll apply for is for some culvert work, um, again, on, I wrote down the road here that we talked about. Um, but it's more of the culvert work. River Road. On River Road. Ditching and some, some culvert. So we'll apply for those two. The deadline for that is November 22nd, so it's coming right up around the corner. But um, hopefully we can get right on that. The other grant that we were awarded was the electric vehicle charging station that's going to go out in the corner there. Um, and so I um, made contact with uh, that and the person who was instrumental in that program. Um, that's really back in our lap. We now have to order the charging station, do the scoping out of the electric work to hook that up. And when we do that, we do need to provide some schematic of some sort to the railroad as the leaseholder. We do have a year and a half to get that project done, but I don't imagine we'll get it done. Um, I'm getting that tax thing first. And then we'll, then we'll work on that one. Um, Is that so something that's still, that BCRC could do for us? Um, I did have a meeting with them about that. Um, they will help if we need some help, but there are other resources um, uh, within uh, the Drive Electric Oh, okay. organization. Okay. I have a name there. I just, darn it, haven't had time. Okay. Imagine that. Um, well, that's what I was yeah. asking because I don't yeah. think that's necessarily yeah. something that falls under your oh, but job duties, fine. but okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, I think about, too, if there's anything, if we do have max. Yeah. Right. Yes. Term, if there's any of these that would be a wonderful thing for him to mm -hmm. do. That would be lovely. And I bet he would be have fun with yeah, it. Yeah, I think he would like yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, that would be terrific. I will list. Yes. That would be actually really good. Um, I'll wait and discuss the e the email that I sent out about the, the uh, uh, motion for the for the loan in a minute. I'll also mention that um, our audit, I do expect to get a final audit here any minute, but again, it was my delay in getting their their bill, their bill, their progress bill a month delayed. Um, so can't can't fault them on that. Um, but I hope to do that. Um, but that means that really we need to re-engage for having a 2019 audit because we have to do one every three years. Um, so that's that. Then the big thing is Christmas came early to you guys. So you each get a nice handy book. Oh, I thought you made cookies. No. And eventually, awesome. Lori will wow. have one of these books too. And I have one for Matt, but I'll get to him. So, once all is said and done, I would like to have two signed copies of this book. One for me, one for Lori. And I have, think I have provided a lot of detail in this book and a lot of discussion of, as to what, where this came from. But I'm going to let you take it home, read it over your 
So just what we're looking at is that they're this is a draft. Has, or the, the treasurer's given us a draft copy of the trustee policy reference manual. And this includes a, a lot of policies on, in terms of internal controls, conflict of interest, public records, purchasing, accounting, budget, receipts, capitalization, um, all sorts of uh, <coughs> policies that we have in the village but need to be organized and um, in, a, in a place that is regularly reviewed and updated with approval of the board members. And this will get us in good stead when we come next year to needing a uh, federal audit because of the uh, USDA loan that we have for the waterline expansion project. Also, as I was doing this research, came across the fact that there is Vermont statute requires an annual certification or checklist that frankly I never knew about, but it's in here now um, and we'll do it from, from now on. And as I was doing this, it just came, up, came to my mind and I just may be missing things or maybe policies that we have signed already and I just don't know where they are. Um, but that we just have some areas where we can just really spit things up. And then, as always happens, time and circumstances change. So we do have now an opportunity to tweak a few of our, um, of our policies. Um, there is some discussion on um, several of these sections. I have given in the very front of your book just a, a, a summary of some notes of each section, um, which we can read. And my, my uh, 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 ask is that we, at, at another meeting or a separate meeting, um, just sit and go through section by section um, and discuss this so that it can be, in fact, signed off uh, before the end of December. Um, and then we'll have a signed copy and a book with any, we'll, we'll finalize it with any um, um, changes that might be made at that discussion. And then I can provide Lori with a copy of the full book so she has it as clerk and then I will keep one as treasurer. You will each keep a book for your own reference um, because one of the things that uh, on the recommended checklist is is how well do e do all of the trustees know the policies mm -hmm. so now you all will mm -hmm. and when any of us leaves our post we can hand our book to the next person great great and let me see hold on was that all on my list that was it on my list um, did you, did you want to talk about the the um, our loan? Oh yes, but I don't know whether you want to do that under this um, my segment, or you whether you want to deal with that when you if somebody talks about the highways and the facilities. Um, well, I think I'm just going to give us a sort of a what I know about highways and facilities because we don't have our um, our supervisor here today just because he's been plowing since early. So um, um, why don't we take care of that now if we can? Okay. So we have the invoice that we're paying now for the truck. Um, we have According to um, our bid, we have another $69,499 coming up for the iron. Um, we do not, and when we did this, we, we never had this in our reserve. So we knew we were going to have to do this. And I don't know if you remember, but at the time, um, I had spoken to our bank and there are municipal loans available for this purpose. Um, it's 2.95%. Um, my recommendation is a five-year um, loan. It can be prepaid at any time, principal first, no penalties. I am suggesting the total cost of this is going to be the 
the two of those numbers together, and I didn't write that. You're yeah. suggesting a loan well, in the amount of $140,000? I, I am yeah. suggesting the loan in the amount of actually a hundred and, yes. Um, and, and, he, and, and it's because we have $30,000 in our reserve, a maximum of $30,000 in our reserve that we can take. That reserve is set up that if I sketch it out over the next seven years, the other two trucks, truck one and truck two, will always be funded with our, with our level of reserves. But we can take a maximum of 30000 out of that reserve to, um, to reduce this loan amount now. And then as we get to the next vehicles, the truck one and truck two, as we replace them, we'll have some other years where the normal 26000 a year that we're putting in um, We'll, we'll pay that back. The other thing is, is that we had also discussed when we purchased this truck that um, sale of our uh, surplus equipment would fund this. But as you know, we need to keep that equipment for the 18 months and, and then sell it. This alone, um, as I was suggesting would allow us then, as we sold things, to take that lump and put it against the loan. Mm -hmm. um, so we could do that. Or, if we were in a situation where there was a piece of equipment, another piece of equipment that broke or was desperately needed, even if it's the $5,000 sander that wasn't specifically budgeted for, we would sell the equipment use it against that purchase and then continue with this fairly low interest loan. Um, and honestly, as you read through these policies, it is in keeping with one of the suggested policies that we do on our, mm -hmm. uh, on our financial management. So um, what would be required, it's, 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 it's it's not a loan where you would have to go and then get turned down. I've already talked to our, our bankers. We would, there's no problem with doing that. We would use the truck itself as collateral mm -hmm. until it's paid off and then it's not, just with any loan. Um, so, and because we don't know exactly when the truck is gonna be delivered to us, I thought it would be good to have it have a motion in our minutes tonight where we approve a loan of up to $140,000. Um, it would be the five-year loan at 2.95%. Um, and that uh, John would be, as chair, would be authorized to sign subsequent loan documents. That way, we, if, if in two weeks' time that truck is delivered, we, we have it. Right now, it looks like we can easily pay for it without a problem because we just collected all the taxes. We won't have that forever. So, I'm just looking at the, uh, the bids for the truck. Mm -hmm. were, um, we went with an international HV 507, I believe. For the cabin chassis, um, was eighty eight thousand with eight thousand dollar warranty, essentially, I mean, give or take a few hundred dollars. But so, so the ninety six is what. Right, so that was that the, for the, that seems like it's for the truck. That's for the truck. That's only the truck. Okay, and then then we have another sixty nine thousand. Okay. For the rest of it. That's for the, for body, the body work mm -hmm. for the bed mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. body and the dump ability mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and that work is being done by Delury. No, that's Fairfield, I think. I'm pretty sure that was Fairfield that had no, that bid. No, Fairfield, Fairfield was the, uh, is the sander. sander. It was, um... No, th that, yeah, that is the sander. Right. But I according, think. this was the, this was the bid that we did for the iron. Yeah. So we had those three companies. Well. 
Yeah. We don't have an invoice. For I think them. it's up in Brian. They're still working. Delirious and Pusik, isn't it? Oh, because this this was not on the one time. Yeah. Um, this, yeah. okay. this is so this this, this was the, but it wasn't the fair It was on the warning tonight. Correct. That would be probably yes. next morning. Yes. So yes. But it could be any time. But I'd like to have it in place that we can go ahead and have that loan, so that when that next invoice comes in, we've got we can we can take advantage of that loan. Um, so can you tell me the numbers again? So so the truck coming in now was it was in the, it was ninety six. Yeah, Here's the invoice. Ninety six nine seventy five. Okay, and then the body work is going to be seventy thousand. Okay. So one sixty six and. We're expecting. And we have money in the reserve. Thirty thousand for selling our truck once we. And well, we the thirty, the thirty we were talking about was in the reserve. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so we have in reserve. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we have another thirty for the sale of the truck, right? Their current truck. Yes, but we can do one of. Well, if we do, if we use the money for the sale of the truck, in terms right? Of the if we use the money for the sale of the truck, I would recommend not even touching our reserve. Okay. So regardless, because the reservation is less than zero right, percent right, loans, right, right? And if we find and if we find ourselves in a position to use any of that money, yeah. to put it against the principal, we can yeah. get it at any time without any But the other thing is I wasn't sure when we're selling, selling that truck. Number. I wasn't sure if that truck is going to be sold right away or later on in the winter. Okay. I think I think they were hoping to have yeah, it. Yeah, right. Okay. So, yeah, okay. beginning of September okay. or before. And that way, if we... If so we I don't know if that's even still approved. going. But okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we need. I think we need uh, the 140. And you can say up to. It, the motion could be up to right. or not to exceed. And right. that way, if because I know there's two vehicles that there's some discussion of two of the the surplus vehicles mm -hmm. that have some sales hopefully coming up in the very near future. So if those happened at the same time as this new truck came in, we, we really wouldn't need, the idea would be that we would have paid that, that down on the loan anyway. Okay. So I'd entertain a motion for a um, authorization for the chair of the trustees to um, sign documents and in order to make, in order to take a municipal loan from Community Bank uh, on the terms mentioned, five, uh, five year loan at 2.95%, um, up to the amount of $140,000. I will make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Is there any further discussion? Okay, and all those in favor say aye. 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 And there's none opposed. Okay, thank you. We'll, we'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. So I have a um, few things um, under highway. Um, one is the Grant Nades project from the prior project on River Street. Um, just needed a signature, so I'm gonna, I've just signed that, and we'll have that returned to Jim Henderson at BCRC. Um, I don't know if anybody is going there, or actually Norm, it, is anybody going to the garage tomorrow morning at all? Or? Yes, but I need to keep a copy of this. So this is for the the work that the second work that they did. Yeah. Yes. Culvert work. Yes. Call Mary. To tell me again what this is. This is um, a grant for the culvert work 
that was recently done, but this one doesn't say where it was. I know there was a second one, not the one that was out on. The intersection of Rich Heights and River Road. Rich Heights and River Road, okay. And if you take a drive down there, it looks good. The, the culvert looks good, and the, and the um, patch across the road looks good too. Unfortunately, the, the next drive down, we had authorized some construction at a, a next lot down from there, and um, the re landscaping there is causing a drainage issue. So we actually are, the, one of the grants that we're looking at for next year is to do the exact same thing a little bit further down the road, um, which is fine. That happens, and you know we certainly want people to be able to build houses to live in. So. Um, and I had a nice discussion with the owner, and um, he wants to, you know, make sure that we coordinate and work together. And it's very positive about dealing with the issue. So um, I got a letter from um, Attorney General Donovan, uh, November first. Uh, he sent it to all municipalities in the state um, to. Um, consider enrolling in uh, a negotiation class essentially for a class action lawsuit in uh, opioid litigation. Um, if we do not opt out, we will be part of essentially a class action to try to recoup some expenses that we have had relating to uh, the opioid epidemic. So um, I would the, the letter is, uh, has quite a bit more detail about the lawsuits and the reasons for the lawsuit, but um, people can get that information from the Attorney General's website, um, ago.vermont.gov. Um, and you could, I presume, become more active in the litigation, but um, I would, my my position as a trustee would be that we certainly have had indirect expenses in the town as a result of this and um, that I, I see no reason to opt out of the class action. I mean, the, the only reason that I would consider opting out was so that we could sue them on our own, but I think um, that may be a little bit much for us. So I don't have the time to do that personally. So, um, any does any is there any further discussion on that? Or there's no motion or anything required for that. So, um, there's been a there's been a request. I just wanted to acknowledge a request that was made for um, sidewalk uh, clearing on Church Street. So we don't currently maintain the sidewalk on Church Street. Um, there used to be a sidewalk there, I think, years ago. Um, and we had, for a time, kind of continued to drive the um, plow down the, uh, I'm going to get it wrong, what, let's see, what's the east side of Church Street, but it's just lawns, essentially. We just kind of do a strip down the lawns, but um, that's not really good for the equipment, and it's also not good for the lawns, frankly. So, and it's also not great for liability reasons. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. If it's not a proper sidewalk. We shouldn't be encouraging people to use it and such. Yeah. Unfortunately, that makes it quite difficult for this particular resident who's. Um, an older American, and uh, sh she just had asked us to consider doing that. I think that um, for those reasons that we've stated, it would be very difficult for us to to make that a, mm -hmm. a standard plow. But we sure, certainly, I think, sidewalks on Church Street were part of the scoping study that was done. Um, several years in 2011, I think, and 
Um, so if there's opportunities for grant funding to support sidewalks on that street, I think we would certainly look at that and be in favor of that, but um, we don't have the resources really to put to that right now, to put in new sidewalk there. Um, but I would encourage her and any resident that has any issues to call the garage on a case-by-case -case basis to see if there's, you know, some help that we could provide if there's a, a particular situation. Yeah. Was this a proposal that you, I don't know why I put your name on that, but. What is it? This was about a website. Well, maybe it was a different <laughs> mark. Um, okay. So I'm going to table this because th this was a suggestion that I had gotten to acquire a, do a domain name um, for North Bennington separately from what we have for, on the. Uh, the fund for North Bennington's website, um, and I agree that that's something that we should do. That it's time for us to do is acquire our own website so that we can post things in the way that is expected of us. But um, I think one of the issues with that was is the amount of time. It would, it would require quite a bit of time for somebody to go because I think once. I'm trying to think of how that came up. Once we have our website, we are then kind of obligated to yeah. maintain it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Within a certain amount, you have to post things, right? Within yeah. So it's it's it, not that it, it's not no. Say again. It's not that onerous. It's not okay. To post it, but I think if we did, we would want to have we would want to hire somebody to do it for us. So and then. There is a requirement that at certain, um, I don't remember off the top of my head, although I did go to an open meetings training, yeah. um, that you you would have to post the minutes of meetings. I think part, part, part of it was, it, it wasn't necessarily how easy or hard it is to maintain it. It's the amount that once you open a site that's specifically for a village business, that you're obligated to put certain things in there. Yes, yes. Monthly, so I, I just, I don't know but it's, about it. But it I do be, remember the first time we had it. would be your, your, not so easy your to just warnings, your, your agenda, and your minutes. Yeah. It's. Yeah, I, uh, I agree that the, uh, those are always concerns that I've had about that, is that we are a small municipality and that um, some of those can seem onerous, but I think at this point, the purpose of the open meeting laws are to provide information to the public, and at some point, we're basically saying we, you know, can't afford to provide openness, and I think that's not a good position for us to take. So we need to say, people are using. Well, the spirit of that would be that we are open because anybody can come to the meetings, and we do post them in all required places, right? Well. And according to the letter of the law, but I think what I'm suggesting is that if everybody uses making their phones and their computers, computers and stuff and don't come to meetings anymore, then it's at, at a certain point I feel like I feel, and this is my mm -hmm. that it's our obligation to sort of come to them as opposed to, you know, if, if our meetings are on Facebook and YouTube, you know, that's, I, I actually get people say, oh, I watched the meeting, mm -hmm. which, oh, okay, well. If that's how people are participating in democracy, then we should be providing the notice and the minutes in the same way and not saying, well, you could come and get them from the clerk or whatever. Which is not, I mean, I'm not saying you're saying, I'm just this is my opinion. Okay, so, but again, I'm not sure who made this proposal. Uh, so we'll take a look for this month, but I'd like to keep putting that on so that we to make some progress and maybe again that's something. Maybe that's something that project we, yeah. we discuss when we also do our budget discussions. Oh yeah, right. Because I absolutely agree that it may cost us more to do that. You know, hopefully not a ton more, but you know, this is suggesting again I don't know where it's came, but an annual uh, 
uh, domain name fee and you know a hosting yes. service fee and stuff, which are mainly just yearly costs, but it's something. So. All right. That's so high other highway and facilities reporting. Um, we're, uh, we're hoping to get closure on the uh, on the water improvement project here. Uh, Mechanic Street is as most residents know has been closed, uh, which is Honestly, a mixed blessing. You know, you get it makes it kind of difficult for us locals getting around, but it also cuts off the commuter traffic from New York to Bennington, so that's not terrible. Um, but it they're running up against the time clock on getting that put back and paved. So I'm hopeful that with any luck, weather might be good next week and. Um, they can get that put back so that we're not dealing with a big mess all week. Um, so we would encourage that. Uh, we thank the guys for going out this morning and uh, taking care of things early. Uh, and yeah, okay. I think that, I don't know if there was other anybody can think about specifically the highway but um, I did happen to just uh, as a note I did happen to do my leaves this past weekend in a boneyard it was open and there were at least three or four we seem to be on exactly the same cycle there were two or three trucks that were going in about the same time I was every time so people are taking advantage of bringing their leaves to the, the boneyard to relax out of there so hopefully at least that if we turn them over they make for pretty good yep. soil so that's I did my fair share. Yeah. <laughs> Put quite a bit in there. Okay. Um, oh, uh, I did ask. Uh, there was a question that was asked to me by a community member about the shared responsibility in terms of the school and the village, um, and so. My understanding from the village perspective is that while the while the village owns the property, uh, that all facilities and maintenance of the property are to be maintained by the school, and so that would include you know all landscaping and leaves and mowing and plowing and shoveling and all that stuff is to be done by the school. So. Um, we, it's it's not my understanding that we have ever maintained the uh, inner like there's a there's a circle that goes in the drop off. Yeah, I don't I do not think that we have plowed or or sidewalked that before. It may be that we've gone in there. You know, if it, there are a lot of places where if Warmer <coughs> Zach or whoever just makes a quick pass because they're there and they just happen to do it but that's in my understanding that's never been our responsibility to so the person this, that the school hires um, I saw him doing that today okay the contractor who the school hires okay uh, was there multiple times in that circular area trying to Perfect. get the ice away okay great. so you're right the, the village does not maintain that area okay. Um, and let's see, uh, any, I don't, I don't think there was any other highway specific stuff. I mean, as a, just a side note to the water project, I did meet again, oh. about possible, yeah. uh, that doesn't think it's going to happen. It hasn't got back to me. We met, uh, we kind of came up with a plan, but part of their issue was the, the material they take out that would not fit, so to bring over the park. Um, the, the material that they, they couldn't use to fill, which is basically, he didn't really 
explain the exact size, but once you know you get rocks from a certain size, they're not going to put it in the ground because they'll just they'll be sinkholes. They were having a, a hard time figuring out what they were really going to do with that. Yeah. So I think they're trying to roll it all into one. So I and it's been weeks since I've heard from them. So I assume we found another another. Respect okay. square one. Yep. Um, I don't have any report from the DRB. Do have, and there was an update on the property on Main Street, 40 Main Street, where the, the tree came down across the street. We were able to get um, uh, some payment for our expenses on that particular issue from the maintenance company, but um, I think I, I think I still need to to try to get them to do more work on the property itself because it continues to well, be just really a tree that's still there. Right. Um, but the other side of that is that the, the foreclosure proceeding is going forward and is is looking like in the spring at some point the uh, right of redemption would expire so they'd be able to have a foreclosure sale. So it's apparently, I mean, since the lawsuit has been filed, the appropriate people are claiming that they have the appropriate documents to proceed with the sale, which is better than we had done in years past, which we didn't know who owned it. So now someone is claiming they have the right to go through the foreclosure and they will hopefully do that and they can get back into private hands. And taxes were paid on time on that property. Oh, good. Okay. So. Well, that's, yeah. And it, there hadn't been outstanding taxes, so that there had been. There had been. There had been not last year, but the year before. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, the fire department is looking to um, basically fix uh, something that broke on their furnace, and they've been advised they can go ahead and do that. Um, and. I think we, the, oh, so the water board, um, we talked about the project, but um, they do need to appoint, actually, we appoint the members of the water board, um, but according to the agreement, um, they submit, they recommend certain uh, people to fill the position. So they've, uh, they have, submitted those names. They wrote it to me back in September, and I apologize for not bringing it up at the last meeting, but um, uh, the two names for consideration are Jerry Elwell and Ron Pembroke. Um, and obviously, I, I mean, I would support either person for that position. It sounds like the uh, um, term that's expiring is Jerry Elwell's, and he I think is willing to continue with that position. And it's one position, not two. It's one. They just have to. They have to. They have to provide two names yeah. every time they make. Okay. So we're looking for a motion to yeah. appoint. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So I'll make that motion to appoint Jerry Elwell for a five-year term on the water board. There a second. I'll second that one. Okay. Any discussion on the water board member? No. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. So that's unanimous as well. Okay. I'll let Jerry know the good news. Uh, BCRC, the Bennington County Regional Commission. Um, provides a lot of service to the different communities in Bennington County um, and part of the way that they stay connected to the communities is that they have an advisory board of members from each of those communities that get together regularly and meet and talk to them about what services they should be providing which is a good way of doing that. Bob Howe has been on that board for um, several years um, and I had been in touch with him and um, he 
police um, decided not to renew that uh, role. Um, he's got other, you know, he does a ton of stuff around more than he should, but, um, uh, and we, you know, just can't thank Bob enough for all of those many things that he does for our village. Um, he's just a real huge part of our uh, community here, but, um, and so we thank him very much for that service and totally understand that um, maybe it's somebody else's time to step up here. So I don't have any suggestion or, or anybody that's asked to be that member, but if you do know anybody or... Um, so is that we could make an appointment? Is he stepping down now or is there a date? Or I think that his, at I think time? his term may be expired. <coughs> and that we're looking to appoint a new person. But let me just read this. So it, it may not have been specific. His term may not have been specific or specified. It says, uh, the appointments and duration of terms are entirely at the discretion of the municipality. So that is depending on how long. I don't ever remember making an appointment. He must have been doing this for, for a long time. time. And I don't think. I think it basically is once he decides, well, once think, that position decides to step down, then he. Yeah. I don't remember ever. Because George was on the jail commission for mm -hmm. a very long okay. time, and then I remember I think Bob took over. So, I mean, it's very, it's infrequent sure. when you appoint someone. They do a really nice dinner, so whoever wants to that <laughs> position and get a good dinner out of it, I know that. Um, they do great work. Yeah. I don't know, they've been very helpful. Um, so, okay, let's, let's, can we relist that for next month's agenda as well? And then if, it, if, it, if we can try to, if you think of that as you're going about the village and see if somebody might be interested in that. I think since Matt's not here, he should be nominated. <laughs> I do, I'm not sure if, let's see, because uh, Bob is not a trustee, so I don't know if so that's you're purposeful. Just has to be a random person. I don't know yeah. if, it, if there's some mm -hmm. kind of conflict with a trustee. And do we have any information like how often they meet or? Yeah. Um, it is important that the municipally appointed commissioners remain engaged with BCRC by attending regular meetings six per year, okay. casting votes on issues required by statute, approval of local and regional plans, and serving as an information link between their communities and BCRC. Attendance at special meetings and participation in committees is optional. So roughly by a month late, it sounds like. I don't know if they've actually. If they do it standardized, but yeah. Okay, so that's helpful. Okay, so we'll move on from that, but add it to the agenda for next month. Um, <coughs> I got a
might need to I might need to come back to that one, I guess. Uh, we had <clears throat> we the village has a permit for roadside digging, roadside and any digging actually. There's a there's a permit to do that. It's fifty dollars, and you have to fill out this form. Um, and the back of the form has some suggestions and requirements about how the work has to be done to what uh, to a certain standard. So ours is a front and back two-page deal. Um, Bennington's permit and um, standards is more like, let's see, like eight or ten pages um, and includes a lot more detailed mm -hmm. um, standards for different types of, uh, you know, how you handle traffic control. Um, they're I think, if I'm reading this right, their permit is quite a bit less than ours, but it's, um, it seems like you have a lot, you have a lot more specific requirements that you have to adhere to. Um, there's the permit. Um, so, on, I, th I think that we should consider Mm -hmm. developing a more either adopting mm -hmm. something similar to Bennington or something a little bit more up to date. Mm -hmm. I know this was it was quite a while ago we adopted this. Mm -hmm. It's the last revision was 2006. It's so a project too. For Max. For Max. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's going to be full time before you know it. I think yeah, I should make a list. If we right could now. maybe do, uh, I, I think the board could just take note or have an advisory mm -hmm. motion, not a mm -hmm. not an action motion, but just take it under advisement that we'd like to look into this and and would like to have a proposal for a motion to amend our policy on roadside and digging in the village. It's and, and just my opinion on like season or something. Yeah, in my opinion on anything like that, it'd be nice to have Norm present for any discussion because he's certainly yes, definitely. But I think he and he gave me all this information, so this was at his sort of at his suggestion. But um, we'd like to to make sure that any any digging that is done and particularly any digging that's done in the right of way be done to a specific standard because when you know we are trying to we're putting a lot into maintaining our roads to a high standard and you know if somebody just right. does their thing and well, does they, it they replace put it out back to a we typically require, I don't know if it's in this, but we require them to put up There's a thousand dollar bond. A bond. Yeah. To ensure that they that they put it back. But if the policy doesn't specify how it needs right. to be put back, yeah. that's an issue. No, it makes sense to at least review it. Okay. So mm -hmm. We take it under advisement that we will update our, our uh, digging permit that was last revised March 7, 2006. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I had another meeting with the McWaters Park uh, board and or a member from the board and. We had had a few discussions with Norm about what to do about the mowing there at the park because it takes a lot of time and expense and wear and tear on our mowers to do that park. 
And so Norm had looked at some uh, chemical treatments that we could use to inhibit growth. And they, they do that, um, especially on golf courses. And it does, I consulted with somebody who is a, you know, a greens manager or whatever for mm -hmm. the Equinox. But, um, and it works. But um, Matthew and I didn't really see any reason to do that there, especially near the river and especially because the point of the garden is uh, an edible area. So they're, they're planting berries and nuts there for you know, humans as well as animals to enjoy. So that's, it's not really consistent, I don't think. Um, but I personally don't feel like mowing the lawn there is really consistent with that either, to be honest with you. So what Matthew and I propose is just, well, let's let it go and that'll be, we'll just brush hog it every now and then and it'll be fine. That's, that was a little different than what was expected by the McWaters Park Gardener people because they've they sort of view it as something they want to invite the community in to enjoy mm -hmm. and so access is an issue for them mm -hmm. but when I met with them they definitely understood where I was coming from and said oh well okay that makes sense so it's um, I think that we're both on the same page about it being in a natural area that we want people to enjoy sort of the natural landscape there and the, and the plantings and stuff like that. But it's just a question of, um, you know, what's the appropriate maintenance? And so we're thinking that probably it would be something like having a buffer area that was mowed instead of the whole mm -hmm. thing. And we're talking about, so if you, if you pull into the parking area to access the river where the, the, mm -hmm. the, the re, landscape parking area there. There's a little ramp that goes down and then some picnic tables and stuff. And then there's a memorial stone as you sort of as you sort of start to go over toward there. Everything up to the stone would be kept the same way as it is now. We're talking about like the field essentially that they mow right now. So you can essentially just more walking paths. Exactly. So if you, because there was, we did put in a walking path, but I think we do not treat it anymore. I haven't seen it the last couple of years no. come across. Mm -hmm. So there is a, there's a walking path right. on the water's edge of the, of the park mm -hmm. that was, I want to say, a gravel of some sort at one point. Um, that, like I said, is probably overgrown and isn't maintained anymore. We could simply do a walking path mm -hmm. along with the edge yeah. nice. and then just kind of access that winds through so you could access the, the different yeah. uh, bushes or, or plantings that they want access to. So it would be more of a, a one pass mowing of a kind of like you see up at the college right now where they have their paths and the fields are on the road, but there's a path that they mow the that yeah. at least, mm -hmm. you know, you can walk your dog on or, or walk yeah. yourself or... And access to their garden beds. Sure. So I think, and unless there's some objection from the board, I'll continue to have discussions with them and just That's basically nice. direct how mm -hmm. that will happen next year. It may be that they come back and say, well, we... You know, we, we just got this where we wanted it. We want it to be a public place where we can have picnics and da 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 and keep the ticks down and all that stuff. So, and if that's the case, then I think, you know, we can think about mowing it for one more year and saying like, okay, let's really have a more formal meeting and decide what we're gonna do. But if this sort of half and half system would work for everybody, then we can just do it that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Can I put something on new business? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, the Winterfest committee had their first meeting this past week, um, and with the loss of Lindy Lynch as the figurehead of this whole event, um, a handful of people are stepping forward and, and helping to get the organization going, including the round table with Sandra and, um, 
Abby Martin and a couple other people, um, myself included, but I kind of bridged the gap between the trustees and the Winterfest crew. And with the absence of Lindy, Lindy got a lot of funding for the advertising from the um, help me out. Chamber. chamber. Um, and so we're trying to find sponsors and whatnot to help fund the Winterfest, um, predominantly the advertising for it. Uh, but at the same time, I said that I would come before the board and say, is there a way that the trustees and the town would supplement in any way um, the, the needs of the Winterfest to advertise, to keep it going? I, I, is that something I need to bring to the March meeting? For me, that's a similar request as yeah. the last one. Would you know? Even though it's a, um, it's more of a public issue than, than a private. Then, it, but it's um, uh, the only thing I could say is we have in the past, and I'm sure that we would provide in kind um, support. You know. Logistical stuff, or or make Norm available, or, mm -hmm. or Justin, or um, which can save money. But I don't know if we. Um, it's I think it's the same situation where if we're not specifically um, authorized to expend something, that we can't really do that. That's okay. We can go through the formal yeah. process. Mm -hmm. There's just not a fixed person that is replacing Lindy right now. Yeah. So there are many of us that are going in different directions to keep it going. So so, so did you lose funding from the chamber because essentially there's no they, they chamber spoke member of, member that Yeah, they spoke the of operating out of loss and not not necessarily funding as much as they did in the past because they don't have Lindy mm -hmm. prodding them to do that. Um, so I think we're going to try and push for more sponsorships from you know local business and whatnot, and I think that that will help. I don't know how much we were spending on advertising, but I think it'll go well either way. I'm just doing my job to bring it to the trustees that we are proceeding with Winterfest. It will be January 25th, and um, you know we'll go from there. We can provide advertising in the form of a poster on municipal <laughs> property. <laughs> What I would do, even if it doesn't work this year, that's something that, because it is something that certainly benefits our community because yeah. it's here, that it, it, even if it's not this year, I would suggest going through the steps. Yeah, okay. figuring out what that right. loss is going to be. Yeah. And, and certainly putting something before mm -hmm. the March meeting on, mm -hmm. on possibly getting on that yearly. Yeah. Because it is a great event, I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is our event. And it is yeah. our event. Yeah. Yeah. It's here. Yeah. Parks, perfect. Go for it. The parks event. There you go. <clears throat> um, old business is uh, the Verizon Wireless uh, communication site proposal. Can I think the balloon float was mm -hmm. after our last meeting? Yeah, right? the balloon float. So we met and um, we floated a balloon. Right at the at the garage, um, and I know Matt, I, Matthew went and took a look at it from different places. I looked at it from George Street, um, and I think the plan was was that we were going to. Um, what was the plan? I think that I thought they were going to do another. That they were right. going to prepare plans. They were going to prepare then, plans, and then they would do another and have a public yeah. meeting, and then have another, another float, float so that it would be yeah. more permanent, like yeah. up for several up for days. Because this was just up for a half an hour, or an hour or something. Mm -hmm. um, but you couldn't yeah, really. What was the initial? See it. What was the initial? It was nine. I think it was 90 feet. No, no, no so you oh, said oh, right. the right. and that was Matt, did, did he? Matt, I didn't hear back. I wrote, did you ever hear what Matt? No, he, he told me to look at the balloon and then I never saw him again. Well, he was going to go toward, <laughs> toward Lake Perrin and look from there and look going down. And I went and looked from, from George Street. And it was actually hard to see. Okay. So it wasn't as interesting as you could touch it. Good. It's like, 
as I thought. Yeah, I think the initial thought to all those things is it wasn't that much higher than a few crazy things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Was it 90 feet? Because the discussion I think it was last month was 70. It was 70, so but I think they put it they at 90 feet. Yeah. They had to go yeah. higher. Okay. Did he do that just? When they got up there, they looked at 70 and they, they figured they were able to go a little higher. So it was either. Okay. So you looked at it at 90? I think I looked at it. was either 80 or 90. Okay. It was higher than they, than they talked about. They, went, they ended up having to go higher than yeah. they originally mentioned. But I don't know what Matt, I don't know. I never heard well, from him. From what, different views. Yeah. If you could see it from Karen. Um, I think that was the main thing he was going to look from. Yeah, well, I wonder if you couldn't see from George Street at that point. You probably can't see it from Perry. Although, yeah, you, know, yeah, sure. right from, uh, you could definitely see it from Mechanic. Yeah. 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 You know, when it was. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, I'm just curious. All right, so we'll see what they propose. Yeah, I think they were going to. And we had been mentioning in the email that we may have a student from Bennington yeah. College. Yeah, interested in working and doing a field work term here with the village. Mm -hmm. um, and I think so one maybe of the we could uh, uh, we could entertain a motion to authorize that. I don't know if it's early to yeah. do that, but uh, well, he he has to just he has to sort of put in his paperwork. Okay, um, so for let's that, so he sort of needs to that. Do. And I think the question is, is that a full-time field work term position is 30 hours a week. Okay. Is it potentially a, another opportunity he has for, to work with a, a faculty member who might have some hours? So would, are we doing an internship or are we doing paid? It would be a, it, I mean, I'm assuming we would pay. pay. Um, so I think, I think, let me just see what he raises. So that would be similar to what we've done in the past. If we feel like we, if we have enough, I mean, it seems like I think we do. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think his preference is to have this as many, yeah, 30 hours a week would be a full time for FWT requirements. Mm -hmm. And for how many weeks? Um, I think it is. It's like all of January. Six, six, weeks. Six, six, I think it's six February. weeks for 30 hours a week. He has to have. 200 hours total. So what would it be? 200 divided. I don't know. I can't even well, 30 think. hours. The right yeah, so it's, that's, yeah. If it's 30 hours a week, it's, like it's almost seven, seven weeks. Seven weeks. Okay. okay. I think there's enough work. You think there's a. I mean, he could do it. He could do. You know, a few hours if we wanted to do, you know, 20 or 25. But if you think that there's 30, I think that's his. Well, his preference. Should we have projects laid out, and then we have to have people assigned to mm -hmm. oversight? Or he had one person that would oversee or sign off. Mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. You could just decide who that is, and then maybe you, and then we yep. all feed you. Maybe that. I mean, that could work. Yeah. I could. I could sign off on it, and then you could let. Me and then we would. Yes. Yeah. He could work with you. He could feed you yeah. projects. I had that one project. I know Chris yeah. Damon says he's got some stuff. Could he physically work here? Would it yeah. make more sense? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, there's Wi-Fi or upstairs. So. Yeah, so you think between, I mean, I already had written down, um, the, there was a grant, you guys, what were you just talking about earlier, the grant, was it a road survey or a? Yeah, but that, that, we would just simply apply for that, okay. but we wouldn't have that. But it would be but the one. That, the what was one the that, one that you were talking? The one that we have is the electric vehicle charging station. That's, that's, that's definitely that's be a cool thing okay. to do. That's it. Though. And I have all the information, the resources. We've actually scoped out in our application. We put the type of equipment, and there's a lot of detail as to where we get it. But where I wouldn't be able to. I would need help with is we have to ski, have some schematic of the how the electricity is going to hook up and then that has to go to the railroad and they have to because it impacts their utility okay. we have to do that they've already approved that we can uh, we can change the utility okay. and we actually pay the fee for that but okay. 
Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Do we have $4,500 to throw at that, though? Um, well, from other lines, yes. One, that of, would be one of the areas... And oh, and if you look, I didn't mention, but um, there are some areas which when we, when we, before we end, if we um, plan like a, maybe a preliminary budget meeting next month or so, um, I think that you'll see from the budget versus actual a couple of areas where we have some funds. One of them is um, in the highway um, uh, health insurance okay. because Justin didn't sign up for health insurance. Oh, okay. So he was offered it, I'm sure. I hope so. so. Well, he told me his wife, his wife is a teacher, so it's so, going to be more... So he will then qualify for that end of the year um, um, study, whatever we do, the payment in lieu of insurance. Yeah. But there's, there's going to be... I think your math was slightly off. I think it's 3,000. Yeah, 20 times 50. You got, you got money there. Yeah, 20 times 50. Yeah, you got, times 15. you got money on that line alone. Why would it be 3,000? I thought you said it was 300. No, it was he only needs 300 needs 200, 200 hours. Oh, right? okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. 30, 30 hours a week was for 200, 200 hours. hours. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Hours. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I just missed it. Yeah. Sorry. I was like, oh, that seems like... The signal's crossed. <laughs> we all apply. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I think he would need to... Um, ask for the or submit something in writing mm -hmm. okay. uh, before we considered it though and that actually I was that, that was something that I had forgotten about but we we did also promise I think a 90 day review for Justin mm -hmm. and that um, is there somebody else I think Mary and I is there anybody else that planned to because that should be coming up at the end of the month, right? He came in in September August. 3rd was his first yes. day of work. Yes, he came at the end of August. So uh, December 3rd. October, October, November. It should be coming up the first week of December, Maybe before I the next meeting. So if anybody else wants to participate in that, I think I will, and I, I think more than Mary will. Mm -hmm. If you let me know when it is, depending on when you do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I have no bad reports on Justin. It seems that he's enjoying it and also that he's doing a great job. Good. That's great. Good. Um, the only thing I can find in my email, and I think this is it, is that um, I just wanted to let people who may view this or, or, and you all know that apparently Cat TV has revised their broadcast schedule. Um, and so you can, I'm assuming, go to their website to see when the new times for your North Bennington trustee meeting will be. But it says... Uh, um, Sunday's at 12.30. Sunday's at 12.30, Tuesday's at 6 a.m., Saturday at 10.30 a.m., and then the live uh, replay on Wednesday and Thursday evening at 9 on uh, this week. So... Tune in. <laughs> we want to be used. <laughs> like us on Facebook or whatever. Okay. Not on Facebook. Yeah. Instagram. All right. That's all I have. Any executive session? I don't think, I don't think so. All right. We'll be. Uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Yeah. Second. Second. And hearing no objection, we'll stand and adjourn.